Hello Booktube, it's Ben here from the History Fellow Channel. Um, I hope everyone's all well, um, all enjoying yourselves and everybody's families are doing. Uh, they're all fit and well and healthy. But um, anyway, thank you very much for tuning in and watching the video. Um, I've got a book haul today. Um, I've had, I've actually had two boxes of books come, uh, one from Pen and Sword Books and one from Casemate Publishing. So I'll do the ones from Casemate Publishing towards the end and let's get on with the um, Pen and Sword Books first. Right, the first one is quite an interesting one, or I do, I think it is. It's called Medieval Military Medicine. And that's from the Vikings to the High Middle Ages, and it's written by Brian Burfield. That's Pen and Sword Books, priced at twenty pounds or thirty-five US dollars. Uh, from the blurb on the back, a realistic, in-depth review of the methods used to treat the casualties of violence in the Middle Ages. It describes the treatment of injuries sustained during tournaments as well as war. Analysis of the work of the surgeons who treated the sick and injured. Chapters investigate surgery to repair wounds, fixes for broken and dislocated bones, disfigurement and the disability, illnesses and infection. Considers the psychological trauma related to medieval combat, based on new research into chronicles, surgical texts, miracle yet miracle connections and government records. And the last bit says include oddities of medieval military medicine, including leper knights, ants used as tiny medical clamps, and the buck teeth that caused the death of a Viking warrior. So that sounds quite interesting to me. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm probably expecting plenty of swords in bellies or limbs lopped off, that sort of thing. Uh, next we've got The Battle Against Slavery. This is written by Paul L. Dawson. And that's The Battle Against Slavery, the untold story of how a group of Yorkshire radicals began the war to end the slave trade. And that's another Pen and Sword Books with um, the price tag of £25 altogether. I'm quite interested in this one because um, we're hopefully moving up to Yorkshire in the summer. So um, hopefully I can find out a bit more about some of the people that used to be there and some maybe some of the local places as well. So that's the first of two Yorkshire books I've got. Right, this one's in the field, 14 to 18. I served with Hitler in the trenches. So this is probably, it's written by Hans von Ment. It's probably gonna be mostly World War I, but it might include some, some little bits about World War II as well. And that's pen and sword books priced at 20 pounds, but it's quite a, Small thin volume. Um, let's get a look at the. Yeah, it's only about 120 pages, so um, that should be a quick read. From comrades, I heard that during the heavy fighting on the 9th of May, Hitler carried his messages through artillery and machine gun fire, and so with repeated commitment and the risk to his life, had contributed much to the victory. And it's a shame he couldn't have ran a bit slower. In the room where we slept there was numerous rats. Hitler used to spend his time putting them to flight with his pistol. If they disturbed him during the night. He lay near me and with his sudden jumping up. He hit me so hard on the feet that I had to cry out loudly. In my anger I threw out on him. I threw out. I threw one of my riding boots at his head. 
And the last bit, I went into the canteen at the church, but only stayed a little while. That was lucky because that evening another shell exploded there. A minute before the explosion, Hitler was, went past with a message, and he and I escaped death once again. In the end, Hitler escaped death many times, it seems, unfortunately. Right, the next Yorkshire-based book is one of my favourite ones because um, it's part of the Your Towns and Cities series. And this one's called Middlesbrough at War, written by Craig Armstrong, published by Pen and Sword um, Books, and priced at twelve ninety nine. But I like these books because it takes... Um, a look at each individual town around the country and this one's obviously from Middlesbrough <coughs> excuse me but you often get a lot it's all about the local history of that area rather than the actual war so that's I find that quite interesting <coughs> now, the next one's called the Brookwood Killers Military Murders of World War Two, written by Paul Johnson, uh, published by Pen and Sword Books, and that's twenty five pound. Um, from the inlay, nestled deep in the Surrey countryside, stands the Brookwood Memorial, maintained by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. Its panels contain the names of nearly three and a half thousand men and women of the land forces of Britain and the Commonwealth who died in the Second World War and who have no known grave. Among the men and women whose names are carved on the memorial are SOE agents who died as prisoners or whilst working with the Allied underground movements, servicemen killed in the various raids on enemy are not uh, occupied territory in Europe, such as Dieppe and Saint Nazaire, men and women who died at sea in hospital ships and troop transports, British army parachutists, and even pilots and aircrew who lost their lives in flying accidents or in aerial combat. But the panels also hide a dark secret. Entwined within the names of the heroes and heroines are those of 19 men whose last resting place is known and whose deaths were le rather less than glorious. All were murderers who, following a civil or military trial, were executed for the heinous offence they had committed. The bodies of these individuals, with the exception of one, lay buried in an unconsecrated ground. As Paul Johnson reveals, the cases of the Brookwood killers are violent, disturbing, and often brutal in their content. They are not war crimes, but crimes committed in the time of war, for which the offender has their name recorded and maintained in perpetuity, something that is not always applied in the case of the victim. Mm. That does sound interesting to me because um, I was watching a, pe a program the other night on um, BBC that was looking at the um, Dennis Nielsen case in London. Who um, it was a gentleman that lived there and ended up um, killing sixteen men in his home. And um, part of the pro point of the program was they wanted to ask the question. Why is it we always get programs and information and newspaper articles about the um, serial killer or the bad guy and yet barely any information or knowledge is out there of the victims of these crimes and it always seems to be um, the perpetrators that get all the publicity and not the victims. So I'm going to look forward to reading that one. Um, the Death Railway is the next one. That's written by 
Lieutenant Colonel Charles Cape, OBE, PSC, AMICE. Published by Pen and Sword Books and priced at £20. Um, the day which the day which successive train groups spent in the staging camp at Bampong almost beggars description. Conditions were deplorable and confusion reigned supreme. The IJA guards seemed to go crazy at their first experience of directly controlling prisoners and became well nigh hysterical in their efforts to deal with even a simple situation. The medical situation was grave. Cholera was raging and dysentery and malaria were on the increase and it was estimated that within a month only 250 men out of 2,000 would be fit for work. From the 21st of June work conditions had become worse and can only be described as barbaric. Men were being driven like cattle and were not returning to camp until at least 11.30 at night. On the 10th of August the sorry spectacle of nearly 200 light duty and no duty men being forced almost to crawl to work in the pouring rain was witnessed. And the last little bit here says the troops were starving on the present rations which were of very poor quality. Boxed meat issued at this stage was alive with maggots and more often than not, 80% had to be buried. The personal account of Lieutenant Colonel Camp on the Thai Burma Railroad. Railroad. Sounds very much like um, what they had to suffer at, um, in the film Bridge Over the River Kwai. But anyway, that's the last of my pen and sword books. Um, the other books I have got are, this one's a big book, this one's called Z Special Unit, or Z, I suppose it's more commonly used in America. The Elite, the elite Allied World War II Guerrilla Force, Z Special Unit, written by Gavin Mortimer and published by Osprey. Um, priced at £25 or $35 US dollars. Uh, as I said, published by Osprey Publishing. They were British and Australian soldiers, a collection of ex public schoolboys, businessmen, farmhands, and students. Together they had formed one of the most intrepid commando units of the war and in 1943 inflicted a crippling blow on the mighty Japanese Empire. Gavin Mortimer has scoured British and Australian archives to reveal the incredible story of the origins and operations of a wartime special forces unit, whose courage, endurance and innovation remained unparalleled. It is a tale infused with valour and triumph, but also brutality and tragedy. Fully illustrated with photographs, many of which have never been seen before. Z Special Unit is a testament to the bravery of Allied commandos who fought to turn the tide of the war. Here we go. Z Special Unit, written by Garen Mortimer. And the last book, um, I got an email yesterday because I'd requested to read a read and review that one but then i got sent an email saying do i fancy reviewing this book as well <coughs> which i gladly accepted although it's a little book i was almost <laughs> expecting a normal size book but um got this little diddy one instead uh, this is the u.s civil war battle by battle uh, written by Ian McGregor, published by Osprey Publishing, 
And as it's a little one, it's only seven ninety nine or twelve US dollars. The US Civil War was the most cataclysmic military struggle of the late nineteenth century in four bloody years of fighting from eighteen sixty one to eighteen sixty five. More than 620,000 American soldiers and sailors lost their lives in more than 8,000 battles, engagements and skirmishes. From famous clashes such as the battles of Gettysburg, Fredericksburg, through to the, West Le the less well-known such as the battles of Brandy Station and Cedar Creek. Illustrated throughout U.S. Civil War battle by battle tells the story of 30 significant engagements covering every theatre of the war and dealing or detailing infantry, cavalry, artillery and seaborne units from both the Union and Confederate forces to give a true sense of the scale of the war that tore the country apart. And then there's a quote here from Saul David, best-selling author and historian. Just a thing for US Civil War buffs, snappily written, informative and entertaining. A cracking read. And then it's um sort of like text and pictures, that sort of thing. And like it says it covers places like v Fredericksburg, Cold Harbour. Uh, the Battles of Lookout Mountain and Missionary Ridge, Battle of Chickamauga, and the Battle of Gettysburg there. But anyway, they all look enjoyable books to me. Thank you very much for um, watching the video. If you've got any comments on any of the books, maybe you might have read some of them or um, you're interested in purchasing some of them from uh, Pens or Books or Osprey Books. I will put a link to their websites down below this video. Just click on them and um, you should be able to easily find the relevant books. Thank you very much for watching. Um, feel free to give this video a thumbs up and a like. And um, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed earlier already, or earlier even, um, please feel free to click the button and subscribe to the channel where there'll be far more books and much more history. So thank you very much and I'll see you very soon later in the week. Take care of yourselves and I shall see you then.